everyone. So today we are going to start with a new chapter that is current electricity. So first of all we need to understand what is electricity. So we are going to learn what is electricity. Electricity is a form of energy resulting from the existence of charged particles either statistically or as an accumulator of charge or dynamically as a current. So we have two different types of electricity. We have static electricity and we have current electricity, right? So what is static electricity? First of all, the basic difference between static electricity and current electricity is that static electricity exists in insulators, whereas current, it exists in conductors. So how charge is being produced on, um, in case of insulators? It is produced due to frictions. When two non-conducting bodies, they are rubbed together, there is transfer of electrons from one body to the another body. There is transfer of electrons. So the body that gains electrons, it will be termed as a negatively charged body, whereas the body that will lose electrons, it will become positively charged body. So actually, we have two types of charges. We have two types of charges. We have a positive charge and we have a negative charge. And if two positive charges are existing together, a, fo a force of repulsion is going to exist between them. It may be positive, positive, or it may be negative, negative. And if the two charges are opposite, that is positive and negative, then a force of attraction is going to exist between them. The quantity of charge in a body is determined by the number of electrons in deficit or the number of electrons in excess. Charge on a body is given by Q is equal to Ne, but I'll be working on Q is equal to Ne, that is quantum nature of charge in my further lecture. So now, let's talk about current electricity. As I told you, current electricity, it is basically in conductors. And why is it, uh, is it there? It is because of valence shell electrons present in conductors, right? So, what is current? Current is rate of flow of charge and which charge is flowing it is electrons as we know that positive charge they are fixed in nature that is protons are fixed in nature right so current is being denoted by capital i and charge is being denoted by capital q and time by a small d so according to the definition of current i is equal to q by d that is rate of flow of electrons Current is being measured by a device that is known as ammeter and ammeter is always connected in series. The SI unit of current is ampere. So from ammeter we can remember it is ampere or from ampere we can remember ammeter. I mean vice versa. So how to define? Suppose they ask you define one ampere means they are asking you they are uh, asking you about one ampere current, right? So from here if we check out from here, according to the definition, we have 1 ampere. Charge should be 1. Coulomb in time should be 1 second, isn't it? So, 1 ampere current is defined as if 1 coulomb of charge is flowing in a time period of 1 second, right? So, this is how we define 1 ampere. Now, as we uh, discussed about the presence of valence electrons, right? So suppose they ask you why current is flowing in metals. So what will be the answer? In metals, current is flowing due to the presence of free electrons. But if they ask you what about electrolytes and ionized gases? Electrolytes and ionized gases. In electrolytes or ionized gases, we have a positively charged particle that is known as cations and we have a negatively charged particle that is anions. So, in electrolyzed and ionized gases, both cations and anions are responsible for the flow of current. So, now we are going to discuss about the quantum nature of charge. What do you mean by quantum nature of charge? According to quantum nature of charge, charge always exists as multiple integers. It can't be in fractions or in decimals. So if I want to tell this thing in a simple language, it means that electrons are always exists as one electron, two electron or three electron, right? It cannot exist as 3.5 electron, 4 by 9 electron and so on. So according to quantum nature of charge, Q is equal to plus minus Ne, 
where m stands for 1 2 and 3 it means the charge on electron can be one charge on electron it may be 2e it may be 3e and so on according to the basic definition of current we have i is equal to q by t right and according to quantum nature of charge q is equal to plus minus ne so if i substitute q here i'll be getting i is equal to ne by t right so if 1 coulomb of charge is carried by 6.25 into 10 raised to power 18 electrons. It means if 1 ampere current is flowing, so 6.25 into 10 raised to power 18 electrons are passing in that particular cross section in 1 second. Right? So, next is whether current is a vector or a scalar quantity. We talk about flow of current, like electrons are flowing towards a positive terminal, right? But current is a scalar quantity. Why it's a scalar quantity? Because simply we are talking about the direction of current and the direction of electrons. So if you remember, we have conventional current, right? So we'll be talking about this in the next lecture. The next topic is potential. So, what is potential? If we talk about grammatically, potential means how much caliber you have. Or we say, if a particular, we talk about the potential of a person, we say how much work a person is able to do, right? So, here, here also we are going to talk about the work done or the performance of a charge. So, what is that? Which charge? So, potential and how come the work done? Suppose we say that we want to move a charge, we want to move a positive charge. Now you may question how come charge, positive charge can be moved because uh, just now a few minutes back we say, uh, we discuss that only negative electrons, the negatively charged particles they are able to move. So how come positive charge? Actually we are not, we literally, it's not literal that positive, positive charge is being moved. It is the comparison of the potential, it is the comparison of the potential of electrons, right? So, if a charge is there and it has to move through the vicinity of many charges, so in the vicinity, we have positive as well as negative uh, charged particles, right? So, if same charge is existing, I mean to say same nature of charge, then it is going to face a force of repulsion. And if opposite nature of charge is present in the vicinity, it means it's going to face force of attraction. It means that particular charge has to work done. It has to overcome the force of attraction or the force of repulsion to move from one point to another, right? So, if we talk about the potential of a charged body, then at, if I take a charge at infinity, so... The amount, of, uh, the amount of work done or the potential will be termed as the amount of work done in carrying a unit positive charge from infinity to that point. So, which, which point I am talking about? The point under consideration, right? And the charge, it will be termed as test charge or you can say the charge, the test charge may be defined as the charge under consideration or the charge on which we are experimenting, you can talk in that way, right? So, what is potential? Potential, first of all, is denoted by capital V and it is given by the amount of work done in carrying a unit positive charge from infinity to that point, right? The SI unit of potential is volt. It is volt, right? And one volt is defined as from the formula if you check out 1 V will be equal to 1. The SI unit of work done is Joule and that of charge is Coulomb, right? So, 1 volt is defined as the amount of 1 Joule of work done in carrying 1 Coulomb of charge from infinity to that point, right? So, we have 1 volt is equal to 1 Joule per Coulomb. So, the next topic that we are going to discuss is potential difference. So, what is potential difference? So, what is potential difference? Potential difference is defined as the amount of work done in carrying a unit positive charge from one point to another point. Suppose I take point A and B. So, here if I talk about potential difference, potential difference will be defined as the amount of work done in carrying a unit positive charge 
from one point to another point right and uh, just do a layman if i want to explain i can explain potential difference in one more way so what is potential difference potential difference is the difference in the concentration of electrons at the two ends of a conductor right so if there is going to be difference in the concentration at the two ends of a conductor only then the electrons are going to flow from one end to another end when a source is being provided to it right so potential difference is a scalar quantity right and next is potential difference is cut is uh, measured by a device known as voltmeter which is always connected in parallel and the si unit of potential difference is volt and suppose they ask you to define potential uh, potential difference between uh, the two points it will be defined as the potential difference between two points is said to be 1 volt if 1 joule of work done is is done in carrying one coulomb of charge from one point to another so this is the basic difference between potential and potential difference it was from infinity to that point whereas potential difference is from one point to another point right so next we are going to start with concept of resistance so what is resistance resistance is defined as obstruction in the flow of electrons so how come there is going to be obstruction in the flow of electrons um we know that uh, suppose i talk about the metal uh, suppose a conductor is there and we know that metal is a good conductor and why it is a good conductor because of the presence of valence electrons right so when uh, potential difference is being provided at that time the electrons they start moving right but what happens okay let's first of all talk about the condition when no potential difference is there so when no potential difference is there the electrons are randomly placed and these are the positive fixed charges that has the positive charges right and the electrons they are randomly placed and they they are drifting randomly right but when potential difference is being provided some source it is connected to some source like here it a cell is there with a positive terminal and negative terminal right so what happens the electrons they now actually they get their their uh, you can say they get their destination because since they are negatively charged they have to move towards the positively positively charged body right they, they there is a positive terminal here so the electrons now will have a tendency so all the electrons they are going to move unidirectionally right and they are going to move towards the positively charged and when the electrons they start drifting there is going to be flow of current right but what happens when there is flow of current uh during their flow what happens the electrons they start banging into each other or they may bang into the fixed positive charge it's just like your classroom when you are there in classroom you all suppose yourself to be electrons and your desks to be positive uh positively charged particle right so if no potential difference is there no potential difference is there it's only drifting the electrons are moving here and there but when a, a source is being connected right all are moving the electrons are moving but the thing is during that movement they are going to bang into each other and with the with the fixed positive charge with the result they are going to halt for some time they are their movement is going to be restricted for some time right and that that movement the restriction of the movement or you can say the energy wastage is visible to us in the form of heating of that element or heating of the wire of the or it may be heating of the gadget that we are using you must have observed in your daily life that you are using some it, it may be your mixer and grinder it may be the motor like you have a fan right so if you are going if you are going to use these gadgets for a long time if you touch the gadgets after some time you feel it hot why is it so it is simply because the resistance is visible to we people in the form of heating of that element or the heating of the electric motor right so that is the cause of the resistance so now what are the factors on which the resistance depends so before discussing the factors of resistance let me talk about the units of resistance 
the units of resistance is ohm donated by omega. So this is the sign for resistance, the units of resistance. So now we are going to introduce a new terminology that is conductance. Conductance is opposite of resistance. Resistance means it is blocking something, it is uh, offering obstruction, right? Conductance means it is conducting. So they are just opposite phenomenon, right? So conductance. Conductance is just reciprocal of resistance and conductance is denoted by capital G. So here if you check out capital G is just inversely proportional to resistance. And SI units of uh, conductance is per ohm because here it will come ohm, right? So it will be per ohm or we term it as Simon. Simon is denoted by capital S. So now we are going to discuss about factors affecting resistance. The very first factor is material of the conductor. So when I'm talking about material, I, I'm actually talking about a conductor or an insulator. So when I'm talking about conductor, it means the number of electrons, free valence electrons are more in number for conduction, right? So when more number of electrons are there to move, it means resistance is going to be less since they are able to free slowly, easily, right? So, material of the conductor, conductors offer less resistance whereas insulators they offer more resistance. Next is length of conductor. So, length of the conductor, suppose I take an example, suppose you are there in your class, you all are electrons and your class, I just give this length that suppose in this length you are going to move, right? So, you can well imagine how much time you are going to take to move from one place to another, right? And now consider the second situation where a whole corridor is there. Now suppose uh, you are there in 10A and you have to move till 10E, right? So the whole corridor is there and the length, I mean to say actually, the length has increased. So you electrons are there. Now 10A students will be there. I mean, I mean to say 10A electrons will be there. 10B, 10C, 10D, 10E. All electrons will be there. It means if the length is going to increase, even the number of electrons are also going to increase. Isn't it? So that's why the electrons, they are going to bang into each other. More is the length, more number of obstruction or more number of banging into each other is going to happen when electrons are going to move from one place to another, right? So, more is going to be the resistance if length is going to be more. If I increase length, the resistance is going to be more. Next is thickness of the conductor. I mean to say the area of the conductor. If I increase the area, right? If there is a thin wire and a thick wire, right? In thick wire, the cross section, the area to move for the electrons is going to be more as compared to the thin wire, right? So if thick wire is there, it means the banging is going to be less in case of thick wire as compared to thin wire, right? So the resistance is going to be less in case of thick wire as compared to thin wire. So resistance is inversely proportional to area. And suppose I'm talking about wire. So what formula I can apply uh, in case of um, area if I'm talking about wire? Instead of A, I can write there pi r square. So that is the area of a wire. And the next and last uh, factor that affects resistance is temperature. So more is the temperature, more is going to be the number of collisions among the electrons. Okay, uh, I'll just quote an example, even you people are going to laugh. Suppose you get a tight slap from your parents, right? The temperature rises, isn't it? The temperature rises, you start moving, you start doing your task very, uh, uh, in short uh, duration of time you try to finish your task. You try to work uh, swiftly, isn't it? Right? So why this thing happens? Because you get, you got a slap. The, there was rise in temperature I or I can say somebody was angry with you there was rise in temperature of that area right so you can say when there is going to be rise in the temperature rise in the temperature increases the kinetic energy of the electrons with the result the kinetic energy of electrons when it's going to rise the electrons are going to bang into each other more frequently fine so that's why 
when there is going to be more temperature there is going to be more resistance or i can say resistance and temperature are directly proportional to each other fine so if i just combine all these factors i'll be getting resistance is directly proportional to length but inversely proportional to area now you may talk what about material and temperature we'll be talking about these factors as well as such i'll not be able to include material as a conductor or insulator in the formula but yes we will be we will be talking about these factors afterwards let's see so r is directly proportional to length and inversely proportional to area and to remove the proportionality sign i have to introduce a constant and here this constant is known as specific resistance and the symbol is rho this is rho it may be it may appear to you as a p but p is just like this p is like this but this is not p right this is rho and rho here i have not extended this part no tail is there right so i have written here rho is specific resistance or resistivity so uh, from the formula rho will become r into a upon l so if i consider l to be 1 i mean to say if length is taken to be 1 meter and area is 1 square meter in that case rho will become equal to r that is resistance will become equal to specific resistance now few of you may get confused about resistance and resistivity you just remember beta that resistance is a phenomenon it is happening electrons are banging into each other it is a phenomenon the things are happening whereas resistivity is a property how it's a property because it is specific for a specific material that's why resistivity has been labeled as specific resistivity